Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to expel the myth of what is Power Automate. So is Power Automate a Cloudflow? Is it a desktop flow? Is it an RPA? What do all those things mean? Well, I will go through both of those scenarios as well as a little bit in the middle around licensing and the different types of connectors that you might use in your solution. So as always, if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So I'm going to kick things off from make.powerautomate.com and whilst we've got Copilot and we could start with describing our flow, I'm going to jump across on to create and help you understand why we use cloud flows. So the first thing we need to understand is we need to pick a trigger and a trigger is why does your cloud flow start? And a cloud flow can be based on an automated trigger, which is basically when an email comes in or when an item is created or a scenario like that where something occurs. You've got instant, which is based on a button push, and those button pushes can be direct from within Power Automate, but also from all the other applications within the Power Platform. So within Power Apps, you can attach a flow and press a button. That is an instant flow. In Power BI, you can do exactly the same. In Power Virtual Agents, now known as Copilot Studio, if you're involved in a conversation with your bot, the bot can call a flow, and that is an instant flow. And also you can do the same from Power Pages. Then you come on to the scheduled flow, and I always think about back in the day, 20 years ago, I used to have scripts running on my server, and I used scheduled tasks within Windows, so you have the ability to have a scheduled cloud flow that occurs on certain days of the week at certain times. As we move across beyond those blank options, we have describe it to design it, which is another sort of co-pilot feature that enables you to describe your flow. You've got a placeholder for desktop flows. You can't build desktop flows from make.powerautomate.com. You'll find that if you click on the desktop icon here, it'll ask you for a name and it will actually launch a desktop application where you build and manage your desktop flows. And it's here that we can see the designer for Power Automate Desktop. And then finally, we've got process mining, which is often skipped. If your organization is looking for a tool to explore existing processes, and you have a team of people carrying out those same processes, then you can use this process mining tool that will enable you to capture those steps and examine the bottlenecks and the similarities, and therefore the opportunities for automation. So let's now try and build a really basic flow and we'll choose the instant cloud flow. We can choose the manual trigger. We could give that cloud flow a name. We'll call that a test flow. And then we can click on create. Now it's worth noting that you can change the trigger after you've built the flow, but when I'm doing any prototyping, I use the manual trigger because it makes my life a lot easier for testing. And we can go ahead and just straight out insert what's called an action. And this is where you build out your workflow. It starts from the top, it works its way down through the logic and gets to the bottom and finishes. So with our action, we can go and search for send an email and actions are part of a connector. So we have the Office 365 Outlook connector and that connector has multiple actions of which one of them is send an email V2. So I can select that and it's now added that into my workflow. And you can see we have various parameters related to that particular action. So we can specify an email address. In this case, I'll put in my dev email address and set that as a custom value. We can insert a subject and I'll go for test and we can insert a body. So I'll go with test body. So at the moment, all the data that I'm inserting is a fixed string, but you can actually insert dynamic strings or use expressions in order to generate the data within these different actions. And you'll see these little toggles that come up here. I can either use the top one here to insert some of the dynamic content that comes from my trigger. And basically any action above that would enable me to bring through dynamic content into the actions below. But I've also got the ability to use expressions using this little F X bar, it's worth noting that the expression language is not the same as Power Apps. It is not PowerFX. And if you're looking for documentation on those expressions, I'll include a link in the description of this video to make it easier for you to find. So if, for instance, we want to insert today's date, I could use the UTC now expression. This will give me a long date time string, but I can then insert the format that I'm wanting to output that in, and I'll include two lowercase d's, four uppercase m's, which is a full month as a string, and then four y's for the year. And we can see what that output looks like when we send the email. And I can click add, and you'll see the little dynamic 
pill that's been added into my email. And I think I'll just insert a space there too. So if I save and test this, what will happen is when I run this flow, it will actually just send an email with the test subject and the test body, including today's date, and we'll have built a very basic cloud flow via make.powerautomate.com. So if I click on test, we've got two options for running the flow, either manually, which is based on right here, right now, or automatically, which is based on a previous run, which is very useful if you've got previous runs that you want to run the flow on, i.e. the data from that history. We can click on test, there'll be a need to first establish a connection to the connector. So in this case, authenticate with Outlook. This only happens the first time that you run the flow. And then if I hit continue and run flow, we should hear a ping. And if I jump across into my email, we can see we have my test email with my test body and today's date, 24th of February, 2024. So back over onto Power Automate, if I click on done, we can see the history of that flow. And the history is a very useful feature for any debugging you do. Make sure you become more familiar with it, but you'll see all the data that comes in and also out of these different actions. And for instance, you'll be able to see some of the parameters, including the email address, the subject, and the body that was sent across as part of this action running. Now, if I was to click back, We'll get onto our details pane, very useful to find out who the owner is, what connections you've used, when the flow is created and modified, but also explore the history of that flow. And I can see that this flow has run once. If I click on that particular date and time, I go back into the history, and this is where at the moment we're brought back into the classic interface that shows us that trigger and the action to send an email. If I go back into edit, we're into the new designer, but if I toggle here, we'll get back into the classic designer and you'll actually see that all of the blog posts that are out there historically obviously were built on the classic designer, but also that the classic designer still features quite heavily in Power Apps, Power Virtual Agents, and also Power BI. Ultimately, the idea is exactly the same. You'll have a trigger, you pick the actions, and then within the actions, you supply the dynamic content, the strings for the subjects, the body, etc and the expressions are all the same. So it's worth being able to recognize that this interface is a cloud flow. It's in the classic designer. And if we toggle, this is also a cloud flow, but in the new designer. Next up, I'm gonna jump into a Power App where I have a cloud flow already attached. And I was gonna show you how we launch that cloud flow. This Power App is used for generating invoices and documents. And if I jump across onto the left-hand side navigation, there is a specific tab for Power Automate. I have two Power Automate flows that I've built previously. And if I was to select one of those flows and go into edit, we'll see the classic interface for Power Automate Cloud Flows. But the trigger, as you can see here, is for the Power Apps V2. This is what enables me to connect the flow to my Canvas app. And then it's exactly the same idea. I have all the actions and one at the bottom here, which sends an email. And the ultimate aim of this particular flow is to create multiple files and then send me an email with all of those files attached. Now I do have a video on this particular solution that I'm demonstrating here, but if I play the app and click on create documents, what will happen is all the data that we see on screen, IT automation, the date and the two lines will be added to a flow and different documents are generated, which ultimately result in an email arriving with those files attached. We hear the ping and if I jump across into my email, there's the email arrived. I have various files attached and if I go into Word, I think is one of my favorites, we can see we have the invoice for the IT automation company for the five pocket watches and the one handmade quilt. And that's all been done automatically using a Power Automate cloud flow. If we jump onto a Power BI report, you can see the visual here for a button to launch a cloud flow. And that has the awareness of the report and the data set that's included. And I have a video of showing you how to export data directly from Power BI into Excel using a run button in Power BI. And then in Power Virtual Agents, exactly the same idea as I mentioned, if you want to trigger a flow, it's a manual flow. If we jump into a particular lesson topic, we have the workflow within the Power Virtual Agent. And if I wanted to attach a flow, I could add a new node. You'll see a call and action here. I have existing flows that I've built previously that will have the Power Virtual Agent or the Copilot Studio trigger. 
but if I create a new flow, it in fact uses the new designer interface for creating a new flow with the trigger for when Power Automate calls a flow and also the action to return a response back to the virtual agent to indicate that the flow is completed. And of course, any logic in between we could add using the add and action. So you'll have heard me make reference to connectors. And again, a document that I'll include in the description. You have various connectors available across the Power Platform. And these connectors supply all the different actions that you're able to call. The connectors come as both standard, which is part of your Microsoft 365 license. It's called a seeded license. And then you've got premium ones where you need to look at buying additional licensing, depending on the model that you choose. So it's worth having an awareness of the different connectors and the licensing model that applies to them when building out your solution, as well as understanding what type of license that you have for your particular user account. In terms of licenses, again, I'll include a link in the description. You will most likely have what's called a seeded license or a seeded plan, as you can see here. That's part of your Microsoft 365 license. That gives you standard licensing for Power Automate connectors. You have other plans down the bottom here, depending on how you want to license your flows or your apps. And this table here gives you some information about not only the different types of connectors you can use, whether or not you can use standard or premium, but also if you can use RPA. And by RPA, we're referring to Power Automate Desktop, which we'll cover shortly. The other functionality to be aware of is AI Builder. And so AI Builder is the clever set of tools within the Power Platform that lets you do things like OCR extraction, so extract entities, or more commonly, dates and lines and company names from invoices into your Power Automate flow. These do come with additional licensing. You have to buy credits for them. They are standard licenses, but you consume the credits. So in order to use AI Builder, you must buy credits as an organization, and then your flows will consume those credits depending on the different models that are called as part of AI Builder. You've also got the ability to use prompts. So if you've noticed GPT at all in any of the news, then you can build out your own prompts, pass in dynamic properties into those prompts, and then use the power of GPT to summarize data and again, extract entities or common themed words from your text. So if we now jump across onto Power Automate Desktop, I've launched the Power Automate Desktop application, often referred to as RPA, which is Robotic Process Automation. And I have a series of previous flows that I've built. Now these flows, I have two demos, one of which is scraping information off of the Formula One website into an Excel spreadsheet, which is a common use case for Power Automate Desktop, but also another, which is typing data into a legacy system. So that legacy system just happens to be web-based. It hasn't got an API, which means you can't connect to the data source behind the scenes of that application. Therefore, you use Power Automate Desktop to emulate an end user you teach the tool what buttons to press, where to type in the information, and how to cycle through the data that you provided to that desktop flow. So to start things off, I'm gonna jump into the RPA challenge demo that I've got, and we'll have a look at that workflow within the designer. So on the left-hand side, I have all my different actions, very much like cloud flows. You have actions that do different things. And then within the middle here, we have all the different steps or actions again, starting from the top and working our way through. I have an example of a loop here, a for each loop. And ultimately what this solution is gonna do is it's going to open up an Excel file, having just launched a website, and then it will enter all 10 records within this file into the website. So I'll go ahead and hit run and this will manually trigger the flow. We'll see the browser launch, and one by one, we'll see the data being entered into the system and looped through in my for each loop. So the great thing about this RPA challenge site is the fields move as you hit submit, and it's a great way of testing out your skills and understanding of Power Automate Desktop. There's a lot more effort required for a Power Automate Desktop to go and train the tool and make sure that you've matched up all these different elements within your desktop flow, but the real power is the fact that it can integrate with legacy applications. And just like a user would type data into a system, you can see how this automation has successfully typed in 70 out of 70 fields with a 100% success rate in just over 42 seconds. Now I ran this particular solution in edit mode, but if I was to 
exit edit mode and run it directly from the attended mode here and hit the play button, we'll see the same process run, but probably in about two to three seconds. So you can see the browser has just launched and very quickly it navigates through all the pages and in just over two seconds, we have all 70 fields entered into the application successfully. As another example, I've got my Formula One web scrape. I'm not going to show you the full solution, but if I hit play, we can at least demonstrate it. And what it should do is it should launch the 2023 standings for the F1 site, and it will go through the top five drivers and select their results so that it can capture those, scrape them into an Excel spreadsheet. So if you imagine me doing this manually, I'd have to click through each page, as you can see on screen right now, and then go and highlight the table of data, paste it into an Excel file and save it. So it might take me a matter of minutes, maybe it could be 10, 15, but if I was doing this daily repetitive, it would obviously be quite time consuming. So as the flow gets to the end there, it's selected Max, of course, one last year. I'm getting a little summary based on one of the output parameters that I specified. But what's more impressive is it's created an Excel file for me. And if I just pop that open on screen, we can see we have all the data that's been scraped for the top five drivers here and all of their results, as well as the overall results for the season with Max at the top with 575 points. So this is a very good example of RPA and Power Automate Desktop using the tool to scrape data from websites into Excel. And of course, by combining Power Automate Desktop with Power Automate Cloud, Cloud can orchestrate the desktop flows. It can call the desktop flow so that it runs at a certain time of day. And it can also pass data to the desktop flow as well as receive data back from the desktop flow and perform further automations. So you could extend your automation of the desktop flow to submit the Excel file that I've just generated, sending it onto someone for further information, for an approval, or uploading into another system, maybe even just a SharePoint document library.